Hello everyone. Welcome to VBA for everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I hope you are understanding the lectures. Today we are in lecture number five. In the last lecture, we talked about code break and macro security. Let me move away a bit. And today we are going to talk about how to read values from a cell and how to write values to a cell. And what are the logical tests, how logical tests are performed in Excel, and what is the role of the is equal sign in the VBA code. So let's go and recap what we did in the last lecture. Okay, let's switch to our Excel and we have to talk, talk about code break and macro security. So the code break was, the concept was instead of running a macro in a Go or running macro with F8 key, we use the break in the code. Macro will run instantly till the code and then wait for the user or the programmer to press F8 or press run to execute further. How that was done in the developer in the Visual Basic, we have our code. Do we? Here it is in the modules in module one. I have this macro. Let me put a break with single click or F9 key, pressing the F9 key. When I run my macro, it will run till this line and then wait for me further run it. So I am just pressing this play button and you can see that macro ran and it stopped at this line. So from here I can again press this play button to continue or I can play with F8 key one command at a time. So this this is about this is about the play button and sorry the, uh, the code break code break is helpful when we are de debugging or understanding our macro the second thing we talked about yesterday or in the last lecture was macro security if we go in the developer menu in the course section we have this yellow triangle and if when we click on this yellow triangle, which is named as macro security, we, we go to security settings. In the macro security settings, we have four or five settings. The first one is disable all macros, don't ask. Second is disable, but ask whether or not to enable them. The third thing is disable all except they are digitally signed so that so the source is authentic and the last one is enable all macros and microsoft says it is not recommended and the last thing was trust access to vba project the last point trust access to vba project we will discuss later the four macro settings are important because the macros can contain code that can run without clicking or without telling Excel to run them. How that code run itself without asking user or without user intervention, we will discuss that later. For now on, for right now, you need to understand that macro security is important and it can contain harmful code. So I keep my setting at disable all macros with notification 
if you are in doubt that whether or not the code is is uh, infected disable all macros without notification and then go to module open the macro read the code and try to understand what it does if doubt if you are in doubt don't run it once you have a clear understanding of the code then you should run it this is very important initially we used to have one file xls and now we have xlsx and xlsm the xlsm file only contains your macros so when you create a macro you need to go and save the file save as xlsm so let's start our today's lecture so today the first thing we need to understand it is it's a conceptual thing and that is reservoirs and variables what are the reservoirs and what are the variables reservoirs are the words which vba use for for a specific purpose let's in simple words let's take example of english dictionary for example in this dictionary i have lots of words and if i click on any word let's say this addition this word has a specific meaning it can be used in a specific way and in english dictionary we have lots and lots of words they have a specific meaning and they can be used in a specific way in a sentence so all the words like all the words in english dictionary we have a list of words which belongs to vba dictionary but all the english words are not present in vba dictionary vba dictionary has his own terms those terms can be used in a specific syntax in a specific way just like english dictionary where you have a word and you can use it in a specific way just like that in vba dictionary the words have a specific meaning and we can use them in a in a specific syntax have we encountered such words till now think about it yesterday in the last lecture when i showed you the macro and we edited it we came across certain words like range selection copy active sheet paste these all are reservoirs they are present in vba dictionary so we can use these words in a specific way in a specific syntax and that's all about it let's go and see what are these words do we do vba have a dictionary for us let's go and find out let's open our excel let's go to visual basic let's zoom a bit more where it is now it's moving the right window in the view menu we have this object browser take it as vba dictionary object browser is 
Rebier Dictionary. I am using these terms. The, these are not technical terms. The IT people will not be happy with me. But for people, as, as the topic says, VBA for everyone. I am explaining these concepts in simple terms. So if any IT people or IT guru is listening to this, please ignore please ignore these examples but think of object browser as VBA dictionary. If I click on object browser, I will get this list of words in and let's just scroll down and see how big the dictionary is. Right? So it's a huge, huge dictionary. So if I click on any word, say application, in in application, there are further words that can be used with this reserve word application. With application, I can use active cell. If I double click on active cell, nothing will happen. Active chart, nothing will happen. So it is not giving me further details, but at the bottom, if I can show you the bottom. Okay, no, not this way. Let me shorten the window now you can see it so active cell property active cell as range read only member of excel dot application so just like a english dictionary where we can find help how to spell the word and how what is the meaning of the word the vba dictionary is telling us the same things how to use it and what are the properties of this reserve word so anything present in this dictionary will be a reserve word it will be used in a certain specific way that VBA will understand right so the concept is anything which is present in this in this dictionary will be reserve word. We will use that reserve word in a specific way. Do we need to learn all the dictionary words? Definitely not. Definitely not. We will be using a very restricted list of words and that would be good enough for us to create a database but if you have time try to go through this dictionary and try to explore what it has it will add up in add to your understanding for example cell format interior property interior as interior member of excel dot cell format sub clear member of excel cell format creator creator as excel creator read only member of excel dot cell format i'm not trying to explain anything i'm just trying you to get familiarized with this vba dictionary what if what if there is a word which is not present in Excel dictionary. What we call that word? Well, in simple words, in layman terms, we can we can call it a variable. Variable is something which is not present in VBA dictionary. It has no value. It has no value whatsoever in eyes of VB or Excel. We will be assigning a values to such variable. Until we assign a value to a variable, it has null value. 
null null means nothing not even zero because zero has a value of itself so vba has a dictionary and the title is object browser and anything that is not present in object browser or the dictionary it is a variable and a variable has no value till we assign a value to such variable so this is the concept you need to understand i hope this is easy and clear to everyone let's further talk about variables let's try to understand them more i discussed about that in the last lectures we have seen macros with some words like range range and then selection copy active sheet paste so what if i write a word think about it if it is present in browser or not oh mm. now i think this is the word is in right direction you can read it better though i cannot write it <laughs> this way but the word r w a n g e is it a variable or is it a reserve word so yesterday or in the last lectures we saw the word range that was being used automatically recorded and we discussed that the words range is a reserve word it is a, it is present in vba dictionary and this can be used in a certain way in a certain syntax but what about this word r w a n g e this range has an extra a with extra a this word is not present in vba dictionary what does this mean this is a variable now it has no meaning you make a spelling mistake and the word falls outside the dictionary and it cannot be used it becomes a variable vba cannot understand it so any spelling mistake can cause you error in your code so you need to understand that anything with a mistake is not present in vba dictionary so let's talk about some other words let's think uh, what can be present in vba dictionary uh let's say let's say the word table do you think the word table can be present in vba dictionary okay let me think let me think keep thinking table table do we see table the word table in excel let's go and find out in the insert menu we have this section tables so there is a good chance there is a good chance that the word table is present in vba dictionary and that word refers to pivot table or the table that appears in that is referred to in excel menu so what about chair then can chair the word chair be present in vba dictionary chair let's think about that chair 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 i don't think so what do you think 
I think it's it's very hard or it's almost impossible that the word chair has anything to do with Excel or VBA. So the word chair, let me write it down. The word chair, how it will be, yeah, now it is straight. The word chair cannot be present in Excel because Excel has nothing to do with a chair and VBA and VBA has nothing to do with chair. So for Excel or VBA, chair would be a variable and chair has no meaning for Excel or VBA till the time we assign a value to chair. So how to assign a value? We will look into it, but you need to understand that the words which have no meaning don't have a value of zero even. Till the time we assign a value, they have null value. So let's talk about the next topic that is the is equal sign and then we come back to our variables. So let's talk about how to assign a value to a variable or to a cell in VBA. For this we need to understand the, co the concepts of logic, logics, the difference between logics and assignment. Okay. I was clicking the wrong screen. Here we go. So if in Excel I use the word is equal, for example, if I say 1 is equal to 1 or because I am going to do some calculation so I add a is equal sign in the start and I say 1 is equal to 1. This is a logical test I am ask, I'm asking Excel to resolve. 1 is equal to 1? The answer would be yes or no. The Excel's answer is true. True is that, that true means that the test has passed. The logic is correct. So the answer is 1 is equal to 1. And what if I test 2 is equal to 1? The, ans the answer is false. I think I should do a separate uh, lecture on this video on this. Uh, how to use how to do logical test with or and and in Excel but let's keep it this simple right now in Excel when I use an equal sign this is a logical test for Excel 1 is equal to 1 means test whether 1 is equal to 1 or not and when I say 2 is equal to 1 then Excel has to test whether or not 2 is equal to 1 or not but what if I use this is equal sign in VBA? Let's go back and look at VBA. If I double click on module 1, it will show me contents. When I talked about macros, I used the word command. Range A1 to C6 dot select is a VBA command then selection dot copy control C is a VBA command so this is a these are the commands for Excel or VBA what I whatever I say Excel has to do it Excel has to perform it so in VBA 
we order something to do it has to be performed it is not a logical test in on excel sheet when we use is equal sign that is a logical test but when i come to vba i issue a command to excel or vba to do this so if i say if i say a is equal to b in excel what does that mean let's go to the notes view let's put this aside and bring back our note if i say so this is a better view for you difficult for me to write but let's say if i say a is equal to b what does this mean this mean i am telling vba to make these, these both equal this is the order a and b should be equal a is equal to b and what if i say b is equal to a again the same command b and a should be equal and vba will make them equal what if a has a value of 4 and b has a value of 3 what now a has a value of 4 and b has a value of 3 who will retain the value and who will lose the value because when both are equal only when one value will be retained either a will retain its value or b will retain its value because to make two things equal they should have same value so what vb will do 4 plus 3 is 7 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 so maybe we can have 3.5 as a value to assign to both or there may be some other rule the rule is whoever is on the left side of this is equal sign whoever is on the left side of this is equal sign will lose whoever is on the left side of is equal sign will lose the value so if a is equal to b a will be the loser and its value will be is equal to b likewise if b is equal to a b being on the left side of is equal sign will lose its current value which is 3 and gain the value of 4 so in this case we have a value of 3 for a and b and when b is equal to a we will have a value of 4 for b and a so the concept is simple in vba when i issue a command of with an is equal sign both sides of is equal become equal and anything on the left will lose its value and gain a new value okay with this concept with this concept let's go to our vba and let's use this is equal sign and see how it performs right we are ready with our workbook let's insert another module insert a new module so we have a blank module now let's type sub 
equal sign test. Bracket start, bracket close. We can't see that. It's fine. Or I can drag to show it to you. Okay. So I have a macro or a code with the name equal sign test. So I, here I would say range. Let's say a7, which is empty in bracket and inverted commas, a7 dot value is equal to, um, let's say, let's put it a name, say keyboard. Range a7 dot value is equal to is equal to keyboard. I have put keyboard in quotes. This shows that it's a text. So if I run this, let's run with F8, not very quickly. Range a7 dot value. What is the value of a7 right now? A7 is empty. There is no value. Is equal to keyboard, and you can see the word keyboard now appears in a7 let's make it blue so all right we can keep it red here it goes let's view our code so right now a7 has value of keyboard and what if i say mouse f8 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 and f8 so range a7 dot value is on the left side of is equal sign range a7 loses its current value and gains a new value which is equal to mouse which is appearing on right side of the is equal sign so this is the basic concept with this concept with a simple use of an is equal sign what we have done we have changed the value of a cell we have written something into a cell and how to read it how to read from a cell think about it how i can read from a cell for example i want to read apple from range a2 think about it how to do it think about it control c range a7 dot value is equal to range a2 dot value think about it it will pick value from cell A2 and write it in A7 or A7's value will be equal to A2. The left side of is equal sign will retain its value. So let's run it. And here we go. Boom. Simple. No rocket science with a simple is equal sign. I am reading a value from a cell and writing it in another cell. Okay. So let's do some calculations. For example, we talked about variables. We let's try to use a variable here. Let's say the word chair is equal to a value of value which is present in cell B3 B3 share is equal to range B3 dot value okay 
what we want to do let's perform some calculations chair is equal to chair multiply by say 30 and then range is dot a 7 dot value is equal to chair so first things first what is chair let's recall chair is something which is not present in VBA dictionary and something which is not present in VBA dictionary doesn't has a value till we assign a value to it. So till the time we assign a value it has no value. So when we assign a value when we are going to assign a value have we assigned any value in this macro to chair? Maybe yes maybe no not let's find out. sub equal sign test excel read the name okay so what is the value of chair right now chair is equal to range b3 dot value what is the value in range b3 all i have to do is just move my mouse over this range b3 dot value and a small window will pop up telling me what is the value in range b3 range b3 dot value right now is 36 what is the value of chair sure is it 36 let's try and find out chair is equal to chair is empty chair is empty why chair is empty when i am saying chair is equal to range b3 dot value why it is saying chair is empty Let's check it out again. Range B3 dot value is 36, but chair is empty. Why? Why? If you recall, in the last lecture, we talked about till a line is highlighted yellow, it means Excel is going to execute it in next step when I press F8 now this will get executed till the time it gets executed Excel doesn't know about it so right now all Excel know is that there is a macro with the name equal sign test nothing else so if I press F8 now Excel knows the chair is equal to range b3 dot value. Let's try and find out what is the value of chair. Chair's value is 36. At this stage, instead of multiplying, when I started my macro, I, I told Excel to multiply it by 30. But right now, I haven't executed it. I turn this 30 into 50. Okay, so the line chair multiply by 30, Excel has not read it. I changed the text. Now it's chair is equal to chair multiply by 50. So the concept is till that time Excel has not read it, it means nothing to Excel. Right? So with this concept, let's execute this command chair which is 36 is equal to 36 multiplied by 50 let's execute it what is the value of chair be quick really i don't know <laughs> chair has the value of 1800 chair has a value of 1800 because 36 multiplied by 50 gives you 1800 Right now in range A7 we have Apple, but if I execute this command with F8 key, 1800 appears in cell A7. So what we are doing in this macro, we are picking a value from a cell, storing that value or assigning that value in a variable. Then 
we did some calculations and assigned a new vari value to a variable and then wrote that new value in a cell and we also talked about till that time till that time excel executes a command he know nothing vba knows nothing so when i started executing and excel has only read the name of of the macro the value in chair was empty null there was no value chair was empty nobody was sitting on it go and trap so <laughs> coming back to vba pick the value did some calculations and wrote the value back so this is what we did today i hope it is very clear and let me find an assignment for you all right this is your assignment sheet what you are required to do is you are required to create two macros two macros separately okay what first macro will do first macro will pick value from cell b2 and write it in c2 this is simple i have done it i think you will be able to do it very quickly so what is the requirement create a macro no recording not no recording just go into the module and type it and if you don't have a module use the insert menu and insert a module then type a macro there with starting with sub and with and ending with end sub so pick up a value from a cell write it into a cell pick from b2 and put it in c2 and then the second macro in the second macro what you need to do is pick value from a cell wherever the cursor is wherever the cursor is if it is in b2 if it is in c2 if it is in d2 b b2 b4 b7 b8 b10 wherever the cursor is pick value from that cell add 10 and write it back to the same cell for example if i pick value from b4 b4 is 44 i have to pick 44 then add 10 that is becomes 54 and write it to b4 i don't want to be specific wherever the cursor is user if user has selected is the cursor is in cell b6 it will become 33 if the cursor is in b10 it will become 46 and how that is done i am giving you the command active cell dot value use this active cell dot value it will help you in resolving the second requirement so till next time goodbye for now and allah hafiz